The mission of the United States Forest Service is to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of the nation's forests and grasslands for the benefit of future and current generations. And the purpose of our stewardship work is supporting nature in sustaining life. And to advance our mission and to serve our purpose, we balance the short-term and the long-term needs of people and nature by working collaboratively with communities and partners, by delivering world-class science, technology, and land management, and by pro providing access and resources and experiences that promote economic, ecological, and social vitality, and by connecting people to the land and to one another. And one of our key values is grounding our decision-making in authoritative science. Inasmuch as the agency and other forest managers across the country are facing difficult choices and opportunities about carbon management, addressing environmental justice, and supporting a resurgent economy. Our research and development branch is actively supplying essential data, information, and knowledge to inform decision makers and the public. You know, Congress charged our Forest Inventory and Analysis Program, FIA, to improve our use and integration of advanced remote sensing technologies. And to fulfill this request, our R&D unit and our CIO and ESRI are engaged in a critical partnership in developing the next generation of information products designed to inform today and tomorrow's policy and management decisions regarding our nation's forests. So let me pass this over to our great FIA team who will share the details of their work and recent successes. Hi, I'm Hobie Perry, and I'm joined today by my colleagues, Ty Wilson and Chris Oswald. FIA collects measurements of trees and other attributes on a network of over 350,000 plots. Each plot has a footprint a little smaller than a football field. We have plots from Palau to the Virgin Islands, and let's take a look at Wisconsin. You'll see we sample national forests. We sample state forest lands. We sample tribal lands. We sample lands managed by county and local government. And all those plots not in any colored polygon are the observations we collect on private lands. We monitor all of America's forests to facilitate shared landscape scale stewardship. Now we know we can't measure everything. The Southern Appalachians highlight the incredible variation in land use that occurs between the plot observations. We also know that remotely sensed imagery alone can't match the richness of data captured by boots on the ground. So we created Big Map, our cloud computing solution optimized and tuned to leverage the parallelization and mass storage required for raster processing at scale. We fuse thousands of Landsat scenes with hundreds of thousands of plots, ultimately processing tens of trillions of pixels in the cloud, all in a matter of days. This map of forest type groups is just one example of the authoritative science-based output we are now publishing. Layers like this help us understand the variation and complexity of the forest resource. For example, we know that different forest types, shown here in Northern California, have different sensitivities and responses to wildland fire. Naturally, we make this content available to you, along with our agency colleagues. We're publishing it in the Forest Service ArcGIS Online organization, the Living Atlas, and open data portals. We support planning and decision-making with a seamless workflow, from data generation to discovery, consumption, and application. Another example is this map of predominant major forest carbon pools. Management actions will differ for landscapes dominated by live biomass in green, a dead biomass in purple, or soil carbon in brown. And maps like these give us the ability to populate spatially explicit tools that may be integrated into conservation planning to support carbon management, wildlife stewardship, watershed restoration, and other environmental services. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I suspect you're interested in how this actually happens. So let me introduce Ty to explain more. I'm going to take you on a quick tour highlighting some of the science behind our Big Map project. In order to tackle complex, multidimensional raster analysis problems, we leveraged the versatility of ArcGIS with Python and its numerous machine learning packages to build custom algorithms modeling the relationship between satellite imagery 
and forest characteristics we measure. By tracking changes over time for each pixel in a satellite image, we can monitor seasonality in vegetation. This provides information about the amount of live vegetation, timing of bud break and leaf fall, and length of the growing season. From this, we can infer the presence of different types of forest, composition of tree species, and overall forest structure. One of the techniques used for analyzing these time series is harmonic regression. It quantifies the shape of a profile as a Fourier series, allowing us to characterize not only the average vegetation condition, but also how those conditions change over the course of the year. These coefficients describing seasonal changes in vegetation, along with auxiliary data like climate and topography, are powerful features for modeling forests. Through ecological ordination techniques, these predictors can be combined with response data collected on forest inventory plots to order tree species along environmental gradients. The location of plots in this feature space can be used with the K nearest neighbors algorithm, which works by assigning to every pixel a bucket of plots based on their proximity as measured in the feature space. The contents of each bucket represent a group of records stored in FIA's database from which we can make pixel level predictions, quantify uncertainty, and map a variety of forest attributes. This multispectral image combines three variables, stocking, age, and height. The pink in the southeastern U.S. shows the moderate height and stocking levels of the young forests of the nation's wood basket. Our plans for the future include analyzing snapshots from the past, using both imagery and plot measurements from earlier time periods to map changes over time, such as this map showing losses in forest carbon between 2005 and 2015 in Wisconsin due to major disturbances like wildfires and tornadoes. Next, Chris will show you how these services are being used today and how you can access them yourself. FigMap is our end-to-end -end solution to integrate the latest in ArcGIS system, multiple programming languages, and state-of-the-art statistical tools to create information products for a wide spectrum of users. We are excited to share with you our vision of using these services today and in the future. Droughts are having huge impacts on forest and woodlands, and agency scientists are already using big map results, like this forest type group, to make drought model projections available widely. Examining drought exposure from recent years. The area in brown around the Central Valley in California shows significant droughts during this time. Projecting forward to 2040, drought exposure shifts from Central California to the Southern Rockies. Let's take a look at how you might use our new authoritative content for a different problem. Recently, we were asked to help identify landscapes that represented opportunities for planting and increasing sequestration of carbon in trees. And to do that, let's take advantage of our FIE stocking percentage layer, which can be viewed as representing where additional capacity might be located. And let's focus on the Pacific Northwest and add data to a suitability model, FIE stocking and site class productivity, wildfire hazard potential from our Missoula Fire Lab, and pest and pathogen threats from our Forest Health Protection Program. We are looking for areas where planting opportunities exist without significant threats. The results, highlighted in purples, are areas where threats are low, productivity is high, and forests are not fully stocked. Now this demonstration suggests a lot of opportunities might exist in Western Oregon and Western Washington. These could be important areas to realize shared stewardship to implement climate mitigation or restoration plans. And that was two examples of how you might consume these services in your own analyses using notebooks, geoprocessing tools, raster functions, and more. Today, we are excited to announce the release of our new hub, the FIA Geospatial Showcase, hosting all of the content we have shown today and more. Our hub represents a meeting place where we're sharing our best science and data in order to facilitate collaboration and empower your efforts to create a sustainable future. We will regularly add new content 
eventually publishing other information products derived from our database. With consistent science-based information from FIA and others, we as a community can focus our energies upon the opportunities and tough challenges facing us. Our goal is to provide the information you need to be an active participant with us in sustaining our forest resources today and in the future. Thank you.